This Curb Log topic was suggested by Junie Reeves. If you'd like to suggest future topics for videos like these, and if you want to hear them before they officially release, consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash curbifer. This is the story of my art style and how it changed a lot. Over all the years I've been drawing, so hope you enjoy this Patreon Curb Log. Shout out to anybody that knows that because it's from... Rockman EXE and not from Mario <laughs> Mario Brothers Z. Uh, welcome, folks. So I'm excited to do this one. Uh, this is sort of going to be a, uh, a kind of sequel to a topic that I did many, many years ago. Uh, once again, thank you to uh, the lovely folks on my Patreon who have been suggesting these topics in the first place. Really appreciate it. And um, so many years ago, uh, in fact, it's going to be coming up on nine entire years ago, uh, shortly after I moved to uh, California, only a couple months uh, after that, and I think about September of 2014, I did a topic uh, that was uh, based on a question that I got about uh, something quite similar to the question I got for this one, uh, which was the influences on my art style. However, I went in a bit of a different direction with that topic back in the day, and I'm going to link to it. Uh, I called the video, The Dangers of Your Art Style. Um, and I not only talked about uh, what, I, uh, what I'm going to go into a little bit more in depth uh, with here today, but um, which, you know, what the actual influences of my art style were, but uh, I also talked uh, a little bit more so than that about just that, the dangers of your art style. And I highly suggest that, uh, especially if, since I'm sure I have way more viewers and listeners now, um, it, to any of you who are aspiring artists, um, and uh, those of you who are have ever possibly been curious about what kind of advice I would give to uh, if you're developing your your talent and your skill and your art style in particular, I highly recommend that you go check out that video. I'm going to link to it in the description below and probably uh, in, in an uh, annotation at the end or, or in title card, whatever it is. Um, so go check that out. It's kind of going to act as like a precursor to that, or rather this one will be acting as a sequel to it. Um, the difference between that is I'm going to talk uh, more in depth about the specifics of um, each art style uh, that, that kind of influenced me over the last, God, probably 25 years at this point, maybe maybe longer than that. You know, actually, yeah, definitely longer than that, uh, at least 30 years of my life. I'm 34 at the time that I'm making this video. And uh, in addition, because I felt that this was so intrinsic to talking about my art, I figured, you know what, I'm going to go a little bit of an extra mile and I'm going to give uh, a, a bit of a visual aid uh, to um, to how this goes. And um, interestingly, since in previous cases like this, um, and as many of you have seen, I've, I've often drawn pictures of, uh, you know, various iterations of my internet Sona Kerberfer, but for this one in particular, uh, and you'll probably start to see the uh, visual aid now, I'm going to use a different one. I'm going to use my other uh, shameless self-insert character. You probably know them best as Frost. Uh, they were previously, as you can now tell from the uh, not-so-clever labeling on their uh, basic bitch shirt design that they had. <laughs> um, he was just Chris. Then he was Chris Frost. Currently, he's Rudolph Frost. That may or may not change, but probably not. We'll say. Um and uh, so this was a piece of art that I did a number of years ago, uh, quite a while ago at this point, and I called it um, a walk through Christory, where it was, uh, I'd basically gone back home to Long Island and found this, uh, this giant tub of old uh, drawings from my childhood that I hadn't seen in years. And, you know, I actually, when I went back to uh, visit Long Island again, uh, this past February, I uh, hadn't seen them in years since the last time I'd seen them in many years. Uh, wrap that, wrap your head around that one. Uh, so I, uh, <laughs> I was going through a bunch of them and was, you know, just having a whole nostalgic flashback with them. But I still had scans of the early ones, the 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 top one that you're seeing here uh, in the top right corner. Uh, I believe that this one in particular was done probably in the year 2000. Um, and, uh, I, I think that each one of these might have been around like, you know, a, a year or so apart, maybe longer in certain cases, but this is the full il illustration. And this would have been from 2000 to, I think this last one here would have been sometime in 2011, maybe 2012. Uh, no, I think it was 2011 because I think it was right before, uh, I started working on the, um, uh, the Tome 2011 series. So that would, that would make sense for it being around that time. But so let's start at the very beginning. Um, <laughs> This little freak of nature that you see here, 
um, is my best to my recollection rendition of how my art used to look uh, from most of my early childhood. For probably the first at least 10 years of my life, this is how my art style looked. Um, it was not, in fact, based on anything in particular. Uh, it was not, uh, you know, some kind of specific, um, you know, show or whatever. Uh, it was really just, I want to draw pictures. I am a little boy and I like drawing. And this is just how I know to draw people based on my looking at cartoons and animation and movies and anything, just any and all media that I am consuming at all kind of combined together into whatever this mess is, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so, so this is where it all started. This was the, the humble beginnings of myself. And, uh, it was eventually leading into, uh, I would say these first two illustrations that I did of my sauna, uh, in, uh, in, yeah, this is probably 2000 and 2001, if I had to guess. And um, so, interestingly, the very first, uh, and this probably won't be a, uh, you know, a, a huge um, surprise to hear, but, you know, prior to the first thing that was a specific, uh, you know, art style influence on me, which, you know, at that time it was like Power Rangers, Thomas the Tank Engine, Nintendo games, Disney, you know, that was, that was what my whole kind of deal was throughout the 90s. And by the time that I hit the 2000s, and the first... Uh, series that straight up want me to draw in a specific style where I developed, you know, an art style at all, probably to no one's surprise, was Pokemon. Uh, of course, this is looking back at the uh, Generation 1, uh, red and blue and yellow, um, early, early stuff. Of course, we have the Ken Sugimori, um, you know, beautiful watercolor artwork. And we also have uh, the designs of the characters in the anime, which, which of course, were done by, you know, various artists and characters. I, I unfortunately don't, off the top of my head, don't, uh, know the um, the main character designer of the original series. I'm sure if Cartoon Gamer is in the comments somewhere, he'll probably know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this... Uh, uh, you know, people, I'm sure, have known forever and ever and ever that I am a tremendous Pokemon fan. I still am to this very day. And uh, I, I was just so absolutely entranced. It was not not my... And it was weird because it wasn't my first hyperfixation. It wasn't my first, like, you know, big fanboy obsession. But it was definitely the first one that really made me, like I said, like, like I want to draw like this specifically. Um, if you look at the way, particularly, um, the, the, the biggest kind of... Uh, you know, case where you can see that this is uh, this this to be true is within the eyes. Now, granted, these early drawings, you know, these kind of first two up here, uh, these are not exactly um, accurate to the Pokemon uh, art style, um, you know, eyes uh, necessarily. But uh, that was my closest equivalent of that. Um, and uh, particularly, you know, seeing Ash and Misty, you know, for a million episodes. Well, not a million. We're not even up to a million episodes, but you know what I mean. Uh, that that was that was one thing in particular that I was like, okay, I yeah, this this is this is doing it for me. This is like this is an appeal that I want to try and grasp uh, specifically. Um, I think that one kind of through line that Pokemon had uh, that kind of captured my interest alongside those uh, earlier influences like Power Rangers and Disney and Thomas and and, and you know just other Nintendo games was bright colors and having, um, you know, a whole array of characters uh, in your main cast that would cover the rainbow, basically. Um, you know, a, an obvious case of Power Rangers is, you know, th most of the Rangers themselves cover the, you know, a lot of the basic colors of the rainbow as it starts. But, you know, even, um, I don't have a colored picture of Ash, Misty, and Brock, but I mean, you know, they covered almost every, uh, you know, the Roy G. Biv color scheme to start with. And um, I think that that was one thing that I found striking, like just bright, color-coded kind of characters. And, you know, that's, as you'll see later on with other designs, you know, with, with um, you know, the teams of my characters as well, there's uh, there's a bit of that uh, prominently throughout as well. Sometimes they don't always cover, you know, every single color necessarily. But, uh, yeah, so Pokemon was really it more than anything else. I was starting to uh, watch a lot more anime at that time. And uh, that'll play into something uh, a little bit later uh, in, in terms of uh, maybe a, a bit of a down point. But I would say that um, kind of in this next era, uh, covering these here, and this would have been from, I guess, probably... This, this little transitional one would, would have been probably like 2002, and this would have been up to here... 
uh, probably late. Yeah, let, let's see, because this would have been 2001, 2, 3, and I don't know if I would have done this. I, I might have done this one in 2004, in which case I guess that maybe would have been shortly before I started working on TTA. Um, so, I, in fact, yeah, I do believe that that holds up with uh, the timeline that I'm thinking of because, once again, probably to no surprise, this was my next major influence, was, of course, Mega Man Battle Network, Mega Man NT Warrior, Rockman EXE, Rockman EXE, you know, etc. This was the next step in terms of trying to emulate a style. Um, this, uh, this time, it was motivated by something a little bit more specific and something that I, I at least... I would like to think uh, is um, something that I that I could in, in wanting to take myself a little bit more seriously. By the time I got to uh, middle school and and probably into early high school, that was around the time that I knew for absolute certain that I my my dream my end goal was to make finished products. I wanted to make video games. I wanted to make animated series. I wanted to make movies. I was I was writing books, you know, I was doing little slideshow cartoons, just all sorts of stuff. You know, this is this is shortly before I started my early, I'm really talking like super, super early days on Newgrounds, like long before I was known for anything. I was, you know, and um, and, and shortly before I started working on TTA, because of course I needed to consume several Battle Network games in the first place before that happened. I, I had played the, uh, at least the first three, uh, I, I believe uh, all three of them and watched a, a fair bit of the show before I started working on uh, on, on the, the earliest iteration of Tome, which of course was TV Tome Adventures. But the specific thing that was motivating me, and and uh, not and, and not only um, that I loved this art style for all the same reasons that I mentioned with Pokemon and beyond. Like I love the character designs, I love the color, I love the rendering of the faces, the way the eyes were, the way the expressions were, just all that stuff. Just every sensibility of it. Um, it was specifically. I want my show to look like this. I want my characters to look like this. Like this is the art style that I want my own stuff to look exactly like. Now, I think that um, all individual creators, like you know, even the most famous one, you know, I, I like you look at um, like Gendy Car uh, someone like Gendy Tartakovsky, and you can see like you know the old UPA cartoons, and then even in, in his most recent series, the um, uh, Unicorn Warriors Eternal, you can see like old Tezuka anime and Disney, you know, Pinocchio kind of character designs, like like very specific stuff that's influenced. But you can still also tell that it's his own unique spin on it. So this was before I had still developed um, exactly like what was unique to myself because you can see here, I mean, even right down to like th this illustration in particular of Chris, this one I believe, and, and I think that if I were to find some of the old uh, illustrations that I did it, with colored pencil in the style of the other balancing act characters, um, I think that you would be able to determine that these, these were just straight up like, not traces, but they were heavily referenced of um, you know, other, uh, the official art poses of some of the Battle Network characters. I believe that there was one, maybe from Battle Network 4, because that might have been, like, just coming out at that time, um, a pose of that that I took, and I just, you know, rendered Chris looking like that. And even down to, uh, the way that I drew his hair, uh, as a matter of fact, I mean, looking closely at, um, Chod here, kind of the, uh, I mean, he doesn't have a bowl cut. This was, this was back when I uh, regrettably still had a bowl cut as my haircut, uh, sad to say, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, uh, I was emulating, you know, this kind of shape because that was my way of making like a cool, what I thought was like a cool version of my hair shape. And it was a case where, as you can see from the earlier cases, this was how I chose to render a bowl cut. I wasn't going for like, you know, uh, Namek Saga, Gohan kind of look for it. This is just, I thought it was more like a, you know, like, like like almost like a helmet over my head. But I was already kind of looking at that, that, that shape. And then the shape of Chod's hair was, oh, that's kind of what I'm trying to go for. And it was kind of around the same time, as you see, we'll get into this next little bit here, that uh, I started to actually grow my hair out. I guess on the note of that, by the way, I'm sure probably people are very surprised that uh, Dragon Ball hasn't been brought up in terms of um, an artistic influence yet. Um, the weird thing is, Dragon Ball is is a and still is a huge influence on me. There there were certainly um, aspects of Toriyama's designs that have kind of lasted, but and and they've and it's weird because those have been consistent throughout my entire. 
uh, and pretty much from uh, probably shortly after the Pokemon obsession. So, so kind of around uh, this era that we're looking at right here as well. Um, but at the same time, um, it was kind of more of like a secondary art style uh, influence specifically. When it came to storytelling and character stuff, definitely it was one of the bigger influences. But when it came to my art specifically, not, not as much as other stuff was. Um, but that said, I'm sure that, that, again, looking at other character designs of mine, there's little Toriyama-isms that I certainly, uh, you know, just straight up ganked, uh, you know, at, at that point. Um, weirdly enough, uh, the next kind of era after the Battle Network uh, fixation, which was kind of around here, and this would have been uh, the mid-2000s, I think like 2006 or seven or so, the next sort of uh, general thing, and this is just a stock image that I picked of just you know, various 2000s anime. Um, it was just anime in general. It wasn't a specific artist. It wasn't a specific show. It was just, I'm watching tons and tons and tons of anime, uh, some of which had a very, like, you know, 2000s era, samey kind of style. Um, some of them that were even guilty of the, you know, the, the what, what people used to call the same face syndrome. Um, certain shows like uh, Negima comes to mind. And like Gundam Seed, where like just okay, this is the character design face, and almost every character in the entire show will have this. Um, you know, there were a lot of series that were kind of guilty of that, and I think that that was something that admittedly was kind of uh, creatively stunting to my growth. Um, in terms of again, just I'm talking strictly my art style because as you can see from uh, looking a little closer at these, um, you know, again, coming kind of coming back to the eyes. Uh, in particular, the eyes, I think, are very unappealing because they were me trying to do something like what you're seeing with Inuyasha or Sakura or Light, um, but I wasn't great at it. And there was even this one specific thing, this is going to sound so silly, but like, um, this was around the time where I was realizing that, uh, and you can see it here, I had the, uh, I don't know how you would describe this exactly, but Anime characters, a, a big thing that, that I always took notice to immediately once I started like drawing in any kind of anime influence style at all, is that um, the whites of their eyes are not uh, a fully enclosed shape. They always have, like, again, you can even see, like, right here with, with Inuyasha, like, the whites of his eyes have these little sections on the left and right sides that open up. And I think that that looks really good, but admittedly, maybe just because I'm a lazy sack of shit, um, I found that really annoying to do. And, uh, and as you can see from a lot of my later designs um, with Tome and Onward, like I closed the, um, the eye shapes because I didn't want to have to go in and, you know, do that for every single, uh, uh, you know, d d like, like drawing of an eye that I would do for, you know, thousands upon thousands of, of frames and everything, right? But um, another thing in particular uh, when it came to uh, uh, outfits is I was starting to try and get a lot more elaborate with my uh, outfits for my character designs. Um, I can tell you right now that um, this same like blue t-shirt with the darker blue uh, sleeves and these you know green single color pants uh, and like really I don't know what the hell I was doing with the shoes they almost looked like Kingdom Hearts but this was you know before Kingdom Hearts was an influence at all and there there was a little bit of that in fact you could even see it a bit on the hoodie I think that the hoodie was a combination and, and even the pants too this was a combination of not so much anime but anime style video games um, you know dot hack would have been around that time for me and, uh, uh, okay, yeah, Kingdom Hearts as well, you know, some of the more kind of elaborate patterns and, you know, not the crazy zippers or anything necessarily, but just trying to make the, the outfits, uh, more detailed. Those were definitely, um, you know, I, I was trying to expand into just like, let me, let me try to make things more realistic and detailed. And I think that that, uh, specifically was because by that time I knew that balancing act was something that's, um, and even just my stories in general, I wanted to have some dark-ish stuff that would happen with them. Um, and it was kind of that same... It was funny, I was just talking with somebody about this today, where, like, there are a lot of anime that um, uh, either were watered down to be on a more kids-oriented, um, you know, TV network or, or block of airing on TV, back when, you know, that was more of a thing. And there were other shows that uh, were not super, super mature necessarily, um, but they were put on an adult network like Sci-Fi or Adult Swim, 
um, because they, they there was no like perfect kind of place for them in terms of American television. And that was the majority of stuff that I was watching. There were certainly some uh, like, like older skewed type of series that, you know, be- like really, truly belonged on Adult Swim. But there were other shows, uh, you know, that, like, like a lot of Shonen Jump stuff that like, you know, that's a perfect example of they're intended for young boys or, or not young boy, but, you know, young, younger people in general. I know I know Shonen is, is boy, obviously, but they have a broader appeal than that, of course. Um, but they, uh, you know, but, but they would still have some stuff that was deemed too mature for, um, you know, for American audiences by standards and practices and different networks and, and whatever. So, you know, they would either be, yeah, like I said, they'd be cut down and, and have like an edited version that would be on TV or whatever. And then the uncut version on the, um, on the DVD at, at, or if, if it was on Adult Swim or Sci-Fi Network, then they wouldn't be censored, but they would, maybe they wouldn't necessarily be like, all that adult. I feel like that was part of the reason why Inuyasha um, got so much crap from Adult Swim because, you know, it was not quite a adult show, but it also wasn't quite a kid show. It was somewhere in between that, so kind of hard to. But but I think that because of those particular influences, I was trying to go with a more serious tone for my own art to match that. Um, but I think that ultimately that was nothing but a weakness because. There's something like almost, at least in my opinion, there's almost something kind of charming about like this one. Like the, these, these are just, I accept like they're older. I was learning how to do anything. There's something kind of charming about, oh God, um, about, uh, this one here. Um, and, uh, I think that it's kind of lost, even though like the quality of the art on some level is better for these two. It felt like I didn't have a real clear direction. Like this was more of like an evolutionary, uh, you know, kind of stage of just trying to figure things out. And that leads into, uh, the next section that this is where I felt a lot better about my art in terms of, okay, now I do have a direction. And that was because as my own tastes were evolving, um, and I was starting to realize, okay, you know what? I can like a series and I can find it really inspiring and, and, you know, influential, but what is it that I should be drawing on in terms of the influences of my art? That was when I started looking into alternatives. Um, When I was going to SVA, of course, from 2007 to 2011, um, I was being introduced to a lot more uh, foreign animation from, uh, you know, other countries other than just Japan, obviously. Um, There were other things that I'd seen as a kid that were from other countries as well, but it was very few and far between. And this was a case where, like, it was specifically for studying it. Um, and in addition to, you know, some of the shows and movies and things that we had, we had been shown in class, my own, uh, interests were taking me to, uh, new places such as with Wakfu, uh, the French, half French, half Japanese, uh, animated series, of course, based on an MMORPG. You can definitely see, uh, some of the influences that would eventually work their way into the Tom 2011 character designs came from, uh, the order of the Iliotrope. Um, uh, or not uh, Iliotrope, the, uh, the, I forget what, I forget what their group is called. It's been a long time. I'm sorry, guys. I love y'all. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I fell in love with the, the look of this show. I was blown away, all, you know, even from an animation standpoint of just the impressive stuff that they were doing with Flash that I, I couldn't believe it was the pro the program I'd been using for, you know, God, you know, not, not quite 10 years at that point, but, you know, several years, um, around that time. And, uh, and, and I loved the art style. I loved, uh, uh, Zsa 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 Xavier's, um, art, which he, he was the, uh, lead character. If he, 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 she, they, I'm not, I'm actually not sure. I don't quite remember. So don't quote me on that. Forgive me. Um, but, but Zsa was the, the, the head character designer for Wakfu. Um, I believe on both the video game and the animated series, if I'm remembering correctly. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, loved this and around that same time I was introduced to a little known in the U S anyway, um, known, but little known comparatively, uh, a series called Inazuma 11, which was a soccer, uh, sports anime that was based on a series, a long running series of video games of the same name by level five, which of course y'all probably know best for the likes of professor Layton and Nino Kuni. Um, it was very much like a Pokemon uh, meets soccer, you know, type of, uh, you know, adventure show. And right away, and you can tell from, this is the original uh, team of 11 kids that were on uh, the um, the Raimon 11. Uh, Raimon was the, the elementary school that they went to. And right away, I was like, wow, 
I love how varied and unique and interesting the character designs in this show and this series are um, compared to a lot of the, you know, same facey stuff that I was still enjoying, uh, you know, the, the, those shows for what they were. But what this was just so different and so unique. And it, it, there was clearly a lot of influence from um, other countries' art style. Like even looking at, um, you know, we have Endo, uh, Endo and uh, uh, Kazumaru and... Um, uh, 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 Goenji, it's been a long time, sorry, forgive me. <laughs> uh, and, and Akito up here in the, in the corner, like, you know, they're the most kind of, like, traditional anime looking, uh, and even, even the girls a little bit, but, like, that, that Professor Layton, um, and I, again, I don't, I don't know the exact character designer for, uh, like, one of the go-to people for the level five official artwork, and you can tell the difference between this and the anime version of the art, but even, even this too, I really like. There's influences from all over. It's not just traditional anime. In fact, actually, this is kind of a side thing, but a complaint that I had about this series as it continued on, because I watched the entire original show uh, before it, it changed to, um, I think it was Ares or something. There was like a sequel series that had like new characters that was like 10 or 20 years in the future. You know, the, these characters had all grown up and become adults, and it was a new set of guys, much like, you know, shows like, and shows and series like this do. But um, as as this original series went on to like its second and third seasons that were based off of these second and third games, respectively, they more and more were replacing these characters with newer characters that were most often like um, enemies made friends, uh, like like this guy Keto up here is one example. But there were other ones that eventually took the place of a lot of these guys, and they were all really traditional anime looking. They were very pretty and had like you know the crazy kind of um, you know, uh, bright hair colors and everything. Not that there, there's none of that in here, too. But even, like, you know, look at a bunch of these guys that just have the regular sort of, like, you know, brown and, and black and, and, you know, whatever, and red kind of haircuts. Um, but even then, like, they're just so unique looking. And I immediately took to that. And I would say that around this era right here, um, these two, which this was around, uh, like, like, 2010, 2011, when I was developing exactly how I was going to draw... Um, the character designs for the bouncing act, uh, like quartet of lead guys and and girl at that time, um, to be uh, how they were going to look and how they were going to be animated. So you can even see that this is back. Uh, if you look closely at um, the way that I drew the eyes, you can see that I closed the whites. I even got rid of the pupils. I decided, you know what, I'm not even going to bother with uh, the pupils, the, the pupils and the eye shines, which were other you know kind of standard anime tropes. And not to not to say that obviously. This series didn't have a bit of that mixed in there with some of their characters too, um, but I was like, you know what? I want to I want to focus entirely on making the animation as good as it can be. Although, of course, I say that you know, frost pants are as ridiculously bizarre and detailed, you know, as they are, and I kind of trimmed back on that uh, after a while. But um, yeah, so this this was uh, this was kind of a magical time because I felt really genuinely good about these influences. Like, I felt like, okay, you know what? I'm breaking out of what was a comfort zone for a very long time. And uh, and, and actually something that um, was more prominent kind of after this uh, sort of era, which, um, but which, which I'll show in a minute. But um, the next sort of thing here. So this uh, is the artwork of a friend of mine, Grace Liu. Uh, you might know her as... Rargyle uh, on Twitter. Um, I met her through a couple other friends uh, in, I think also like either like very end of or immediately after college. And this is, these are just a couple, uh, you know, examples of her artwork. This is her, um, one of her OCs, Anna. Uh, and this is uh, just a rendering of Spider-Man that she did just, 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 just for fun. Excuse me. English is a language I could speak, I promise. Um, you can see down here, this was a drawing of Frost that I did pretty much right after I finished college and was looking back right away and thought, man, I wish that I took this influence before I started working on the film. Because right away, I remember one of my friends, um, I did this illustration right here as like a test of trying to imitate Grace's art. And one of my friends was like, this shouldn't be an imitation. This should just be the way that you draw from now on because this looks so much better than anything else that ever came before it. And you know what? Frankly, they were right. So, uh, <laughs> um, and I, I, I try to follow that to a certain extent. And, and certainly um, this was a big impact because the, actually I, I think this might have been 
one of the first times that it was a specific artist that wasn't associated with a show or a movie or a game, which would usually influence me. This was the first time where I was like, okay, this is what I want my stuff to look like. Um, and I, th I think that actually even somewhere, I don't know where it is. If I can find it, I'll, I'll try to dig it out somewhere. But I think I actually even have an old uh, commission. Yeah, you know what? I think it was right around when I met Grace because I think that I met her and my friend Crystal and my friend Will who were, you know, we used to watch like Gravity Falls, like the new episodes of Gravity Falls as that was coming out. Um, I think that I met them at a convention and uh, I think I commissioned Grace to, to draw the four main characters from Balancing Act, the way that they looked at the time. Obviously, they've, you know, come a long way and some of them changed very drastically. But um, yeah, I was very taken aback by her stuff. However, as much as I probably should have developed that more around that, that stage, um, I'm going to uh, kind of turn off all this stuff here because the next sort of bit was having consistency for the finished product that I was making. Um, for the next several, several, several years, um, and again, not talking about my animation skills or my character design or, um, uh, or, or, or like my writing or storytelling or whatever, I'm talking just my art style. There was a level of consistency that I was kind of trying to keep myself into. You can even see that um, even though this was after this one, Jesus, this one was after this, what you're seeing up here, like this art style for the Tome 2011 series, is a little bit more reminiscent of this. So, and I think that part of that came from, okay, well, I'm doing this as an animated series. I need to keep them relatively simple, you know, as, and in as many ways as I possibly can. And, uh, you know, I, I, I had, uh, I had done that for four years on the side. I was, I would once in a while try to do some experimental drawings with, you know, mostly with some of the balancing act stuff whenever I had time. Um, and I was still redeveloping things with the story. Um, but as far as like my actual art style went, I wasn't working on changing or adapting it or anything for a really long time. And then even when it came to the Tome RPG, that was when I started working with other artists to refine, say, concept art. Like, say I would do a design of a character, like for any of the, the five Dandy Alliance members, I would do a version of them with, you know, elements that would probably look more closer to what the 2011 would look like. And then I would give it to one of the other character designers that I would work with. They would turn it into a finalized design. And then I would take those designs and, you know, convert it into what was hopefully, you know, this being, you know, like, like these designs based off of the, the ones that I would, you know, be, be hiring other people to do and then convert it into a better version of this uh, is what my hope was. And because it was a different medium, it was video games, you know, there was, there was less, um, you know, uh, less animation to do in terms of like, you know, in the way that I was doing it for a show it was more like, you know, character sprite type animation. So um, alongside that, I, I was trying to develop a little bit more of a specific style uh, for just balancing act. These are various, uh, you know, sketches and, 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 you know, little things that I had done, uh, colored sketches, obviously, of Frost uh, over various years, just, again, kind of in the background. Um, actually, here's something worth talking about. I didn't mention this before, and this is a very particular thing. Um, so when I was younger... Uh, and speaking, you know, earlier about that whole, I mean, just looking at, at the difference between this and this, I mean, like this, this is night and fucking day. It's like not even close. Um, and the funny thing was, uh, when I was influenced by, you know, a lot of the anime I was watching and realizing that, you know, there was a certain thing that they did where a lot of the characters would, inter I guess maybe to find some sense of realism within the world that they were creating. Um, they wouldn't make a lot of the features of certain characters all that crazily exaggerated, which is why a lot of the faces and, you know, the facial features and uh, et cetera and, uh, of the characters, like the, the biggest difference you could tell would be the haircut. Um, and I was getting to a point where I'm like, you know what? I don't love that as much. And you can see that over time I was differentiating them. I mean, it's hard to tell, you know, compared to, uh, you, you know, you can't see them alongside the other characters, obviously. But one particular thing that I'm going to own right here, um, probably around this era, um, somewhere in here, uh, I got a piece of um, gift. 
I wouldn't say fan art. It was more like gift art of Frost and a couple of the other characters. And they drew Frost with a bigger nose. And at first, I was like, oh, I don't like the fact that he has a big nose like me because I'm not that I was self-conscious about my big nose, but it was that I, you know, thought, I just thought that that's what you're supposed to do is just have your characters all, you know, look in that same kind of like interchangeable appeal sort of thing because that was the trend I was following. But after that art, as you can see, I started drawing him with a bigger nose to the point where even here, it was not only as you know as big and pronounced as it was. I even went a step further and I gave him kind of like the blushy sort of like um, like almost like he has a cold, which kind of plays into the Rudolph naming scheme. You know, even cuter. Uh, but um, yeah, that that was uh, that was a much later addition that I thought. You know what? This is just something that helps to brand him as unique. Um, I wanted to do that for all of the character designs of. Uh, of the balancing act characters where I, and it was the same thing. I, I tried to do that a little bit more with the tone characters too, but it's much more prominent with, uh, with this stuff, with the balancing act characters, uh, which is ironic because they're real human beings and not, you know, like internet characters in like a, like a virtual world. So you think that there'd be like, it would be the opposite, but uh, no, not so much. I, uh, I, I tried to push it further and further. And that brings me to now, um, where some of the most recent, uh, influences, were things that I sought out for a particular purpose. I missed the boat a little bit on Rise of Ninja Turtles. Um, I saw it after... Uh, I Actually, I think that I, I started watching it by the time that the movie uh, had come out, which I still haven't watched yet. I was going to watch that with, uh, with, with Toxic Soul, um, which she'll be mentioned in a moment, actually. Um, and, uh, but, I, but I watched the series, and I also watched all of Transformers Animated, which I had only seen a few episodes of, did love the art style because I could tell it was the late, great uh, Derek Wyatt, uh, what, rest in peace, great, great character designer, also worked on Teen Titans as well. And uh, yeah, we had, um, you know, I had gone through and watched all this, and I, but, but I'd watched a couple episodes back in the day, I think with Mac, with uh, Devin Mac, actually. And um, I knew right away, like, wow, this is so cool looking, and I love you know, how, like, the designs are set up, the really exaggerated anatomy, even the, the human characters, I, I think, look really cool and everything as well. So uh, when I knew that I wanted to go for something simplistic, stylized, anime-influenced, bright colors, these were two particular examples that I went to that I knew, okay, this is, this is what I'm looking for and this is what I want to adapt. And once again, um, here's a case where, speaking of Toxic Soul... So this is the most recent design of Frost, um, and uh, I did it with her help, of course, that she was, uh, you know, kind enough to um, uh, do this as a commission for me. I'm commissioning her, her to do uh, a whole bunch of character designs, so she's, she's pretty much the lead character designer of the project now. And, um, and then from there, uh, this is just as, as an example, but I, I tweeted this um, sometime last year, but this was a... Uh, a piece of art that I had done based on this design. So this was kind of a collaborative effort of, I knew what I was looking for in terms of how I wanted the style to be. Um, I did a bunch of concept sketches of it, of which I, you know, there's somewhere, um, some of which you've already seen, of course. And then this is what she did. And then this is how I interpreted that. Um, so that was all my kind of journey. And here I am now. And uh, it's yet to be seen exactly how it's going to pan out. Um, I hope that it will go well because I really, really like how my art has turned out these days. Um, I think that uh, even just down to the tools that I'm using, like the fact that you're seeing me do this in Clip Studio Paint and not Photoshop or Flash, like uh, how I have, you know, used in the majority of my work previously, um, you can tell that like just the, you know, the, the art quality is uh, significantly better looking and etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, I... Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with uh, what I've got here now, and uh, I hope that in the future, I'll continue to improve it. So that's actually going to wrap this up, believe it or not. Junie, thanks for the question. Uh, I hope that this was an interesting journey that I've taken you on here uh, throughout my 34-year-long uh, uh, history of drawing myself and other things uh, <laughs> over the years. 
And uh, in the comments below, everybody, uh, tell me your story about how, if, if you're an artist of some kind, um, let me know, how, you know some of the influences that were big on you that uh, helped you improve as an artist and change as an artist. Uh, maybe even ones that held you back and uh, you know were kind of lessons in what what to, what not to do. You know, like what what pitfalls did you encounter? And uh, of course. Those of you who may or may not be interested in the future of uh, recommending and suggesting other Kerblaw topics just like this one, uh, once again, please check out my Patreon. Uh, I'm going to be choosing a topic once every month on the 15th of every month, uh, in which case I'll have a thread for people to... Um, suggest topics uh, going forward. But this was a super cool one. Maybe I'll even have other kind of visual ad type stuff like this uh, down the line. But uh, yeah, this was super fun. Thanks for going on this journey with me. Uh, take care of yourselves. I'm going to get back to uh, streaming Mega Band Battle Network and all the usual. And uh, I'm going to continue to work on some Balancing Act stuff that hopefully I'll be able to share with y'all in the near future. So in the meantime, take care of yourselves and I will catch you all later. Take care. <laughs>